If you'd like to watch this two and a half hour long ranking the Disney princesses according to personality, not just hair, has kind of like a little tiny uh, rebellious streak that led her to the coral reef version of a shady back alley deal with a mysterious, fabulous, very evil uh, older woman who stole her voice and her soul. And uh, she leaves behind her entire support system and her monarchy, her kingdom, and everyone who ever knew who she was and loved and cared about her at all. Check out the link in the description. I'll see you there. Now let's get into the video. Hi, I'm Danielle. I do too much. I like hair, talking, cosplay, music, art, and stuff. Editing Danielle here to remind you to watch part one of this video if you have not yet. It will outline some valuable information. If not, carry on. That is all. I'm not going to talk about how I feel about Elsa as a princess. Lock it up. <clears throat> but her hair is beautiful uh, beyond black hair. There is one more color. I love and black hair in this color are tied for my favorite hair color in life and in animation style character design I just I literally cannot choose I've tried many times white hair is so cool it occurs in nature it's 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 striking it's beautiful it can happen at any age it can happen in any style you can make it that color it's like in terms of making your hair white is a huge hair accomplishment. If it was not already graying or turning white, I just think it's so striking and beautiful. And Elsa's hair is so thick. Love it. Love a nice thick pony. Nice thick braided pony. And it really suits her skin tone. I think it looks very nice. A very pale princess. I was so excited when the... Oh, nope. Nope. Lock it up. I think it's very healthy. I think it's really shiny, but not too shiny. Uh, I like the little crystals, uh, how she's accessorized with that. And uh, of course, I love in Let It Go where she um, takes it down. She's like, Aurora. Number nine. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, know. I look at Aurora's ends, okay? And I have to be honest with myself. The volume. Okay, the thickness, okay? Those big barrel curls, uh-huh. That shape language, pleasant. pleasant. And them thick, moisturized ends. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do, lie to myself? Gorgeous. She's hair goals in a very different way. I want that length, I want that thickness, but I especially want those ends. <laughs> Eight. You know it's Ariel. Come on! She's like the quintessential red-haired dizzy princess. Like, come on! There's like three, eh, two, and like a 2.25 red-haired Disney princesses. And like, and she's still so iconic, flaming red hair. It's so pleasant to look at. Of course, she's underwater. Her hair is fabulous by nature because everyone's hair is fabulous underwater. I love that big, poofy, fluffy bang. It looks like a helmet. <laughs> they really like pulled no punches with the color. Like it's not orange. It's not strawberry blonde. It's red, duh. <laughs> it's Clifford red. It's big red dog red. It's blood moon red. <laughs> Hope you weren't in the middle of a Bacoblin camp because it's giving Blood Moon Red. <laughs> gamers will know. Sup, gamers. Also, the, the gif on the rock, it haunts my dreams. I think it looks so lovely with everything she wears. I think it brings out her eyes. I think it's, again, with the thickness and the healthiness of the hair. I mean, it's constantly moisturized. It's always in some water, salt water, but still. No one saw her coming, but number eight, Giselle. I'm not even going to put it up yet. You'll have to, let me, let me see if you know who I'm talking about. Giselle. From Enchanted. 
She counts because the intro was animated. It was a farce. It was a spoof of a traditional and and old school Disney princess, especially Aurora. But it was beautiful. (laughs) She's an animated Disney princess. Like for the first section of the movie, she counts to me. And let me tell you, Strawberry Blonde is exactly this. So pretty. What a gorgeous color. I refuse to dye my hair ever again, but if I had to, there are four more colors I would (laughs) dye it before this, none of which are blonde, but then the fifth would be this one. (laughs) Now, a lot of the reason she is scored so high is because most of this movie is live action. So that first animated intro... I can, I can, I can feel the smoothness of the animation in my fingertips. It's like a guttural experience as, I mean, an animator. I don't think I can call myself that anymore. (laughs) But as like a person who has formally studied animation, ooh, it takes my breath away. And the way her hair is animated, the way it moves, the color, the lighting, how I feel when I see it move, I'm like, Has something, have you, have you ever had a dream where like, (laughs) have you ever seen something that is so beautiful it stresses you out? That's how I feel about her hair, particularly her hair. I don't know what to tell you. Go and watch that animated intro again. It's, it's painful. It's painful. Number six. Take Aurora's hair, dye it black. (laughs) Absolutely gorgeous. I can't even with Esmeralda, but nope, lock it up. Absolutely so gorgeous. The volume is even more than Aurora's. I prefer black hair in general. I think there's only like two Disney princesses with brown hair. Poor things, dang. But like a stark black hair, it looks so good on her skin. It like brings out like her natural like um, golden underhues. I just think, and it's so beautiful, especially when she's uh, performing on that uh, that little elevated platform in the middle of town square, again in France. Um, and like, she does like the spin down and it's like, whoo. And like her hair goes, whoop, whoop. I was like, I wanna lay in it. I wanna lay in it. Can I nap in your strands, please? <laughs> oh my God. You know it smells like tea tree oil. You know it does. You know it does. I like that it's floofy. It's not, it's not straight. It's not quite giving texture, but I prefer floof over texture, as I'm sure you've noticed in my whole channel. I will do a blowout in exactly one second. It's wash and go or it's blowout. I got two looks. (laughs) I'm stressed because... I'm looking at this list and I've literally changed around four, five, and six, like 18 times. So I'm going to cheat because it's my channel and it's my video. So tied for three, four, and five are Jasmine, Mirada, and Pocahontas. (laughs) Whenever I look at any of them, I'm just stressed. (laughs) I try to rank like my favorite Disney princesses, but once we get into like this final stretch, I just, I feel a way. I feel a way. I feel a way. Mirada's hair is incredible. That is the se- second of the 2.25 red haired Disney princesses. And I love Mirada's hair on a technical level as an animation aficionado and as a hair aficionado and as a Disney princesses aficionado wait am i aficionada is that a thing i don't know anyway mirada's hair it's so full of personality it's wild not really that's just people think it's wild but that's because they straighten their hair or they don't have curly hair or wavy hair it's not wild but it's free it's untethered it's it's her and i think that's so important for people who have textured hair to see, it, it made me so happy to see Disney engines rendering curly textured hair because I felt rather unseen in many ways um, by the Disney princesses line. And I, I get more into, I keep referencing the other video, but I'm trying to lock it up, I'm trying to lock it up. But a huge factor of that was hair, textured hair. And the fact that there, there was a team 
for her hair. Check out all of the uh, the behind the scenes, especially if you have Disney Plus. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that there's something on uh, YouTube just to just to see how much effort on a literal like um, technical scale was put into Mirita's hair. It was literally incredible, and it only lent itself to how much I liked her hair. Um, I will not speak on her, but. <laughs> Also, it laid the groundwork for Disney engines being able to render black hair. And we're talking that 4C. If you saw Soul, the barbershop scene where Disney engines were rendering black hair, I cried. It was probably like the third time I cried in that movie, too. Lock it up. Oh, Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to say anything? Do I have to? Wait, do I have to say anything? Pocahontas. Pocahontas. I think that's actually all I have to say. And Jasmine. <laughs> I think you may have gotten a sense of what I like in an animated hairstyle and in a Disney princess's appearance as far as hair, uh, but I'll go over it again. Volume, length, healthiness, darkness, shape language, and Jasmine knocks it out of the freaking park. We all dream of an upside down Dairy Queen cone for hair. She ran so we could walk. <laughs> I bet you're thinking, Danielle, these are like some hard hitting like Disney princesses. Who's even left right now? Well, let me tell you who's number two. <laughs> Megara. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do I like her hair more than Pocahontas? Yes. I know. Okay. Take <laughs> Megara's hair has so much style to it and not like, oh, that's so stylish. That's so cute. No, like stylization. All of Hercules is just a stylized masterpiece. I love it. The shape language of that whole movie is just so bold and coquettish and it's 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 not afraid to push the boundaries of what the human eye recognizes i love that about hercules and megara's hair is truly incredible now take take the fish okay the fish hair of cinderella all right all right hold that now we're gonna take the thickness and the ends of aurora okay okay we're gonna mix that okay we're gonna take Jasmine's thick ponytail. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and then we're just gonna add a special spice. And bam, Megara. It's like bordering on anime hair. Look at that weird bend. You see how the you see how the actual like bulb of the ponytail goes? And then there's like that. <coughs> what is that? What is it? I don't know. I love it. <laughs> And then her bangs are, how, how is this even a hairstyle? I love it. I feel as though Megara's design in terms of hair pushes the boundaries of animation. Why would you have realistic hair when you can make someone's hair nonsensical? And it just works because they're not real. I feel as though it activated the limitlessness of character design and animation in tandem and hair. I love it. I love it. Love it. Mwah. Love it. Love it. I want you to go through all of the princesses I've mentioned. Mm hmm. Who do you think is number one? Oh, comment below before, um, before I tell you. And then when I tell you, edit your comment and tell me if you were right. No cheating. No copyright here, Number one, Kirakakash. <laughs> Remember that time I told you about when I get when it's when, when have you ever had a dream where you <laughs> sometimes you look at stuff and it's just it's too it's too beautiful. It's too beautiful. I told you, black and white are my favorite hair colors. Hands down, they are tied. I cannot explain why. I tried, it's fine. And especially white hair on dark skin. Ah. 
I blame Storm. <laughs> and again, with the stylization, she's got like this choppy, like completely nonsensical bang action. She's got like a bang in the back of her head. I also love that like little ponytail right here. What is that? Why is it there? I don't know. I love it. But yet, with all these choppity woppities, you go down, down, down to the booty and bam, blunt ends. She take care of that hair for centuries. They got a natural hair aisle under the sea. <laughs> I would love if it was more textured, but it's not. But everything else is perfect, so she wins. <laughs> If your character is not wearing a wig, if your character does not exist, if you have these things to play with, why wouldn't you? Activate the character design. Throw in some interesting traits. Throw in some traits that are not reasonable because you'll make them reasonable through the magic of animation. Really challenge those cosplayers. <laughs> They're getting too comfortable. <laughs> I will not comment further about Kidakaga. Uh, lock it up. Also, should I cosplay Kida? I gotta do more crunches. I mean, shoot, I could. Hmm. Shoot, I might. And so, that's my list. <laughs> Whoa, who are these people? They're my patrons on Patreon. And those in the Starry Spaniel tier, which is these lovely people right here, have access to hours and hours of exclusive videos from me. One of which is me ranking the Disney princesses as people in excruciating detail. And actually I had to remove, what, two Disney princesses? Those on Patreon know why. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. I upload on Tuesdays. I'm thinking about starting to upload on Thursdays again. So if you want to contribute to those posts, I mean, I'm kind of, I, I think I'm just really popping off on Patreon these days. So join if you would like to. I highly suggest the Starry Spaniels tier so you can see everything, including exclusive videos. We, we pop off over there. Thank you again. This has been me, Danielle, your resident weirdo star puppy, signing out. Say it with me now, star puppy. Away! Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.